All right, buddy, I'm making the cross strings now. So what I did was I inserted a string on the side, tied it off. The next one is going to be the cross. So this is my starter. Again, no clamp, no pressure. For cross strings, you're going to do, you only need one clamp. So we're starting off. Remember, here's where you need to weave. So I like to go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and you, you just kind of a sanity check. If you start under, you're going to end over. That's exactly where we're at. So in the beginning, it's going to take a bit of time. It took me a while to be proficient and try to be careful. Now, there is a tool that I told you I will show you that I invested in that's super helpful. Um, what you do is you put this on, like this is by stringweaver.com. So you attach all the strings. Okay, so now, whichever side you are on, if you do this, what it does is it separates the strings for you, makes it easier. So we're gonna go on to the other side. Okay, I'm gonna go, whoop. Now we're gonna go over. So here is where you need this tool. And I mentioned you need to get certain tools. This is like uh, Shilla, I guess is the best way to call it. And because there's a string that's blocking, what you need to do is you need to go in with this and actually make yourself room to to get. So you can see it went through. It mechanically keeps the string down temporarily. You pull it out. And now it gives you ability to go in and put the string through. Okay. So now here we were under before. Now we're going over. And this is where this tool is super, super helpful. It sets the strings up in such a way that it raises and drops alternative strings, so you just push it through super fast. And as I mentioned, this one was over, now the last one is under. Go in. Here's the same problem that we had before. There's a string covering on this side, so we can't simply pull it out. You go in there, you poke it in, kind of make a little hole. Not make, but what it does is it mechanically move, moves the strings, the plastics out of the way, giving you the ability to push the string through. The other cool thing about this string weaver tool is it uh, prevents any burns between the strings because it separates it. Normally, I don't know if you've seen me do it the first time, I actually have to pull the strings back to prevent any mechanical kind of a rug burn. Of the strength. So now I'm going on to this. Oh, I actually need to go back and I'm going to release that tension that I left before. Back to 52 pounds. Okay. All right. Now you only need one, one clamp because one side's already clipped. So you're going in there. You're clamping it to hold it in place, let go, and now you're starting to, the weaving process. Again, this is the tool that really helps me a lot, makes things go a little faster. So now you go in, great, can not find the hole, lovely, there it is. So now going under. So from now on, you're always starting under. Whenever you put the string in, you're always starting under on the first one. From the for the rest of the string up until the end, where you're gonna have to have alternate holes that will be uh, past uh, two strings so, to kind of deal with that. 
So under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Just a sanity check. All right. Again, keeping an eye on that little peep thing. That's what tells you whether you are applying the proper tension and the lever is not going so far back that it's not able to truly apply the tension that you want or need. Okay. So I'm going to switch that over. And it's starting under, over, under. I know the view is blocked right now by the tool. I'm sorry. I'm right-handed. All right. This makes it so much easier. You don't have to deal with pulling the strings. It just prevents any burns. Okay. Good. Let go. Keep on going. The process just repeats until you finish to the end. So. You can see it just slides right through. Great for your eyes. Really easy. And more importantly, fast. So I don't know if you noticed, when I first released the, the clamp, the arm dropped a little bit. And that's okay as long as it's not over-traveling. Uh, keep an eye on that little nipple plastic tab. If it's not poking out, you're good. If it happens to poke out, I would actually adjust for it and address it right away. Okay, move it right along. So move it this way so you can see it. So I don't know if you could see how it actually separates the strings and makes it super easy to, to weave in and out. Otherwise it becomes a really laborious process and more importantly it, it hurts the eyes because you have to make sure to pay attention to the order not to mess up. So again, just uh, to show you, this one, remember I loaded from here originally so it's under, this one coming back, now it's over. So it has to be completely alternating on each and every one of those strings. All right, this is a gamma string, it's a poly, so it's a little bit more flexible. Um, the Bobolot RPM is great. There's really no give. It's not stretchy at all. So as soon as you, you let go, it creates tension right away. Okay. Just moving right along. So Stringway has a better cross-stringing tool that they make and sell it's a lot more industrial strength. It's, uh, I believe it's cast aluminum, very durable. Uh, however, it's a little bit on the costly side and this one really does the job. So I think the 
cost of this guy was 26 bucks, so it's worth it. There actually, I bought two sizes. This is more for standard. This is the one that actually has a uh, different size head or racket that you use. So this is great for 16, 16 by 20. If you have an 18 by, or rather 19 by something, I think you'll need to use the blue one. I think for most of the jobs, the red seems to do the trick. So pay attention to the arm right now. Oh, it actually didn't move. Of course, because I said to pay attention to it. Okay. Moving right along. So at the end, the tool is not going to be able to fit. So I'll have to take off for the last two or three holes. I'll have to do it by hand. In other words, without any crutches. Pull it. Okay. So by me moving up, I'm pulling on the string a little bit just so that it goes in more and prevents for the prevents the lever from going too far for the over travel and not be able to apply the pressure that it's supposed to. Once you lock it in, it holds the tension. One of the things that I also like to occasionally do just to kind of keep track and do a sanity check is I could quickly do a spot check of tension. So it's right now at about 44. That's normal where you are uh, currently on the, on the racket. Okay. Way. I know I'm blocking you, sorry. It's an awkward angle. So that tool that I showed you before, you're going to use it again when you get closer to the end of the cross-stringing process because you'll need to make room um, to get into a hole that's currently blocked by the main string. So normally without the tool, I wouldn't be able just to simply pull like this. I would have to move the strings further back and pull them so not to create any burn uh, due to the pulling process. Okay. So for the last two, I'm not there yet, but for the last two, I'm going to actually increase the tension by three pounds again to address the um, the slack that will be created uh, by create when you create a knot.
course, there are people out there who string their rackets for a living. They could do this without any help, without any tools, uh, by guiding the string in the weaving process a lot better than I can. Well, you know what? I don't do this. I do a few rackets a month, freely for me and for Kevin, so that little crutch does help quite a bit. So you see I'm just simply taking one clamp and I'm moving it from the beginning that where I started to the end just a single clamp unlike the two clamps that have been used for the main strings. So this is what's called a two string or two right two string stringing method. There is a more advanced single string stringing method. I don't do it. I don't think there's a reason for me to do it. There's no significant advantage other than the fact that you can, you don't need to cut the string to length or measure anything. You just go right along. Unless, of course, you have a roll. Uh, so you do need to measure it because you have to cut it off the roll. So if I decide to measure the tension now, this is 70 gauge, it's already at 50 pounds and we're not done yet. So remember I set it to 52, this is absolutely perfect and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Again, this is a new machine for me, so it was a little bit of a learning curve to properly tune it and use it, uh, but once you figure it out, the process is super straightforward and easy. By the way, it doesn't matter whether you use a drop weight, electric, or this constant tension. The, the method behind it is exactly the same. The training process also is exactly the same. It's more of how do you clamp things and how do you pull on it. All right, so we are at, I have three more strings to go in. You can't see right now because it's clamped. I can't rotate the thing. So if you look at it from here, we have, let's see if let's, well, you can see better. Can't quite see. So we have one, two, and three to complete. So this one I'm going to do still with the tool to help me. And then the last one, last two rather, I'm going to increase the tension and I'm going to remove the tool and do it by hand. So now it becomes a little more tricky because the tension is really high as you get closer to the end of the stringing process. Oops. So here we go. Actually, I'm gonna remove it because it's getting in the way for me. Okay. So under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And so now there's pressure that's being applied to the string that I'm pulling. So it makes it a little bit tougher to, to pull. So I'm just doing more of a very manual way of pulling the string. So this is what, what I said to you before. Without the tool, I would have to do something like this to prevent the the burn on you know string on string uh, chafing okay all right so we have two more left and this is when I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to do one pound two pound three pounds oops sorry let's do it again slip one pound, two, three pounds. And again, this is a fully now manual way. Oh, so here you can see that there's a string that's covering the hole. So I can't simply push this in. I will make a notch that will help me just kind of bevel edge like this. And I'm going to use my handy dandy poking device. I'm going to go in. 
just leave it there for a second, pull it out. That gives me enough time to go in and push it through. So now this one is, the one above is under, so I have to go over. Remember, you have to alternate for the stringing process to work properly. So I started over, I ended under. Okay, this one was easy. It went through, I didn't need the tool. All right, so we're gonna apply that tension here. Okay. Again, you put the clamp on the side where you just strung through for both. Whenever you do the, the main strings or the cross strings, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right, so now we're going in this guy. Um, not sure if I can get through. Oh, it did let me go. And so this one's over. We're gonna go under. Now we're ending over, uh, we're ending with over. The last string was started with under, so again, more of a sanity check to make sure you're doing the right thing. And it did let me go through again. So just don't pull too hard. There's no room for you to move the string to prevent this, this chafing or burning. All right. This is the last string. And again, you still have to apply the pressure, the clamp on the last string. Don't do that. It's too close to my tie-off knot area. I'm going to do that. Okay. So now we're just tying it off. And to tie it off, we're going to go to the string that's to the left of the string this is another good tool to have like a little pliers that help you with guiding so we're going to go over and we're going to create a knot once and do the same thing again just to make sure that it's nice and tight okay I don't know if you could use the machine you see, just to help you with the All right, and this, my friend, is a finished racket. I can go ahead and use the Eterno string meter measuring tool just to check what my tension is, and that's exactly at 52 pounds. Super happy with that. I'm just going to release the racket itself. Okay, perfect. Okay, there's a little wheel right here that allows me to release the tension across. It lets the racket go. I'm going to bring everything back to where it was. That's it. The tennis is. Racket is restrung.